Hello, it is Diaper Perv, and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to, I'm going to answer um, a bunch of questions that you asked me on social media. So a ton of questions came in. Okay, we're going to go through the list as best as I can, and I am not going to answer any questions that I answered like on my Twitter or FetLife already where I like you know tagged you and answered the question in the thread and I'm also not going to answer any questions I don't feel qualified to answer which is mainly advice stuff for like caregiver littles um, because I'm not a caregiver I don't identify as a mommy I don't think I'm the best person to ask these life lifestyle questions to and maybe um, I might get a mommy baby um, couple in here to answer them for you in the future so let's get started okay this one I think is the best question that someone asked me and it is like a five-parter question so we're gonna go through it what has changed for you the most as you have been in the scene longer oh wow a lot okay I don't consider myself to be like publicly part of any scene or ABDL scene um, since maybe mid 2017 even though I started dollbabygirl.com in like 20, 20, oh, 2006 and I Need a Mommy in 7, um, I was never like online really or part of a bigger group until way after. So I haven't even been in the scene for that long. I would say maybe six years. And... <laughs> There, there are a lot of you that have been in the scene for like 20 years, so. Um, what has changed for me the most is right now I'm at this weird stage in my life where I'm like super anti-community. And I think it's because I burnt myself out on being a public servant for all these years. Uh, so right now I'm just focused on doing things that I want to do, period, and things that make me happy. Um, that's not just like beneficial for other people. Granted, I like doing all the other things for other people, like when I organize munches and whatnot. Like, yeah, it's fun, but it got to a size where we need a food chart and we need more people helping out and we need you know everyone to do the things that they say otherwise things are gonna like start falling apart <laughs> um, so I was like what am I getting out of this really like am I getting new play partners out of this am I getting personal satisfaction out of it no it just feeds my ego so I'm like whatever okay have your interests change or gotten more extreme yes because I'm exposed to more stuff especially when I was doing sessions for all those years you know 2015 to 2020 that's uh, five years and hundreds of people that I have seen um, so in the beginning I wasn't open to a lot of things I considered myself really close-minded because I had never experienced like messing stuff, um, anal play, pegging. So I'd be like, no. And then people would keep asking. I'd be like, mm, okay, I'll try. But I don't think I know what I'm doing. And then the more I try, then it clicks with you. Remember that. A lot of people, they just don't have fetishes right off the bat as they're born. They see things. They experience things. And then it clicks with them emotionally or mentally. And then they're like, yeah, I really enjoy this thing. And that's why I always preach it is so good to expose things to your partners. Like whatever it is. Like talking about it means nothing to your partner because they have no concept of what it means emotionally or what it is to do the thing with you. 
Um, I tried that with my husband. I made an entire video about it and now he loves the thing that I love the most and it's still flipping blows my mind that I was this lucky in life. Okay, so yes, I'm into messing. I mean, the other day a guy sat on my face and messed his diaper as I was coming and that was super hot. Um, I went through a period where all I did was think about pegging, like not even diaper boys, just pegging cute YouTubers. <laughs> um, so yes, a definitely more extreme. Are you more open or closed with who you trust with this part of your life? I would say more open. I feel like when I found my place in it, then I just told literally all my friends, all my non-ABDL friends know everything about me. They've seen my YouTube channel and they laugh at me giggling for no reason on the big screen um, because I feel like I don't have anything to hide with it and I think having a YouTube channel kind of validates it because I'm like doing education and it's more mainstream because it's on YouTube but I don't feel a need to hide anything with my personal friends. Um, has anything changed with your interpersonal relationships, family, friends, work? Well, I've been self-employed since uh, 2004, so I haven't had a day job since then. I've been self-employed since 2002, but quit my day job in uh, 2004. Um, my family doesn't know because this is still a personal thing and they're, they have no need to know these things about me. And my friends now understand that there is a, another big aspect to my life. So I'm more shared than normal. Like, <laughs> like I'm part of different communities. So I'll have this group of friends and then that group of friends and then this other group of friends. Um, and a lot of times there is some crossover, but not a ton. And now they know hey, I have ABDL friends and I'm organizing an event or I'm going to an ABDL type of event. So they know that I'm probably busier and I have a different added bonus to my life where I'm shared more. <laughs> That's all, I guess. How has the scene changed? Even in this short period of time, um, I see... Oh, Jesus. I see it being more like um, accepted online. There's a lot more young people in the scene kind of knowing who they are or willing to explore who they are and their identity in it and their role in it almost right off the bat, like when they're 18, 19. And I feel like that was not really common uh, many years ago. I still find that 27 is like an age where people really come out and they go to events and they start becoming really accepting of themselves and happy with themselves and they're ready to like share that part of their life with others. Um, other ways that has changed is what I've seen is like negative um, because of how prolific ABDL is online. There is so much more drama because everyone wants to be in charge and it really comes down to that. A lot of the drama is for the sake of protecting the community but I feel like a lot of them are doing it for selfish reasons, as in, hey, I want more followers. Hey, I want people to listen to me. I want to be a leader in the community. And that's when they start bad-mouthing other people and starting drama with other people instead of just 
being happy with being positive or being happy with building their piece of the pie. They want a, they want the whole pie, like right away. And I'm sure if you're just online a little bit to, you know, follow diaper girls or diaper boys and look for fat material, you're not going to see the drama. But when you're, I guess, bigger, you're you're gonna get pulled into the drama unfortunately and that's why I've made certain choices like keeping my private life private and also keeping my diaper fantasy facilitator list private because I don't want the drama and people are very quick to uh, to bring the drama now I do see almost like like the people that have been involved in a lot of drama, they're avoiding the drama. They're anti-drama at this point because they're like, I'm done with it. <laughs> Probably because they got a lot of backlash. Um, yeah, my personal way to deal with that is keep on trucking. Get bigger. Get more seen. Don't let the drama people uh, affect you. And and just be a great positive force. Put out positive medias. Help people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Okay. Next question. How should you tell your family slash friends that you wear diapers? Is there a right way to do it? Well. I would ask yourself, why do you feel the need to share this part of your life with your family and friends? Is it for acceptance? Like, I feel like it's it's such a personal thing that, yeah, it's, it's great to share it with other people. ABDLs and other fetishes, but how will your friends knowing this part of you benefit your friendship? Um, with friends, I, I would say just go at your own discretion. Uh, be armed with the information. Watch my video, Seven Things That People Will Ask You When You Come Out As a BDL video. I swear, <laughs> you're going to get at least four of those questions. Um, as, and then with your family, I feel like they really don't need to know. If you're talking about like you're tired of hiding this stuff, like the diapers and accoutrements from them, just wait till you get your own place and then you have complete freedom to do what you want in your own space. Okay, some of these I don't think I'm gonna be great answering. Without naming anything private, what is the weirdest scene that you've ever participated in that you enjoyed way more than you thought you would? I feel like I haven't really participated in any like things that I would find off-putting. Um, if I'm if I know I'm not into it, I'm probably not gonna participate in it. But I guess I am really surprised. I love anal play so much on men. That's it. <laughs> and I was like super not about pegging before. Um, and I'd rather like use my hands. I would say that, you know, so I can like visually see it better. But now I love it. I, I just think it's the hottest thing ever, even though I can't see or feel anything that's going on down there. Just the act of it is hot. Okay. What is the most wholesome scene you have seen or participated in? As in an almost overwhelming amount of sweetness or genuine affection and consent being on full display. So I can't think of any scenes that I've seen off the top of my head, like being played out in front of me, but um, there is this mommy little couple 
in Vegas and they like to host um, house parties and stuff and their dynamic is the most wholesome and beautiful thing I've ever seen and I'm very motivated to get them on my YouTube channel for a question answer session and I think it is so wonderful because he lives it like they live it 24 7 they are mommy baby couple and um, and he is diapered 24 7 and he when they got together she was vanilla and he came out to her about everything and I think I'm gonna let you hear their story from their mouths because I can't tell it as good as they can but it is definitely a very like heartwarming story and yeah I've I've seen couples where they live the lifestyle but the girlfriend had no idea what ABDL is. Most people don't know what ABDL is. They don't know un until they experience it, um, what that would feel like with a partner. Okay, so what is my favorite pizza? Easy, a Grimaldi's uh, pepperoni with green pepper and or bacon. That's it. I'm kind of picky about pizza because it's something I didn't grow up with. I didn't grow up with a lot of American foods, so it's not something I would like just go and buy. Um, but I know for a fact that I don't like like the cheap pizzas, like Little Caesars and stuff. And I only like Grimaldi's. I don't like a really sweet sauce. Um, I like a more tangy, and I don't like say cheddar cheese on it. Okay, what would you advise someone who lives remotely in rural regions with little funds to do to meet new people? And I think they said that they tried online and it was really tough. And yes, that is really tough to uh, meet good lasting friendships online, but it is not impossible. Okay my real advice and this is gonna take a ton of work is to <laughs> um, is to create really good ABDL media so good that people take notice of you and start following you so instead of being like the person who doesn't have a following just messaging people and say hey hey um, pretty much do what I did <laughs> that was my strategy the whole time I was like let's curate a profile and let's see how big we can take it yeah that's my real advice it would take a lot of work and I know you're gonna say but you're I'm a girl so it's easier for me to get followers absolutely not I'm not a diaper girl number one um, if you're a diaper boy and you can curate good content people will follow you if you are genuine in your content if you keep it real if you keep it interesting people are gonna follow you and just try and cultivate like real friendships and not ask the surface questions I try to avoid those if people ask me those I just ignore them um, and okay with limited funds I would say just try and get to a munch in a bigger city I know it's not possible for a ton of people but try take the train if you have to you can't assume that there is no scene in your city unless you try to start one so outreach 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 in your town and I know it's gonna be scary because you're kind of outing yourself but if they're seeking out the same thing then uh, then you both have stuff to lose okay next question do you enjoy reading stories or viewing fetish artwork featuring diapers if so do you have any favorite authors or artists um I don't really have any favorite artists 
Um, I actually like seeing the old BoJ stuff. And for stories, I went through a small period where I was reading E.L. Haley. And then it got to a point where it was just like too wholesome for me. Like, yeah, it was great story writing, a good pacing, good character development. And I like the themes, but I just wanted like more like X-rated stuff. So now I just subscribe to cute diaper boys that have just for fans. So I like videos. And I guess I've always liked videos like like t stuff on Twitter uh, would be my go-to for like fat material. Um, okay, next question. Do you lean more towards diaper lover or mommy? Um, I would call myself, I guess, a diaper fetishist. I've never, like, okay, when I first started doing professional sessions, I called myself a mommy, but I don't identify as a mommy, and I stopped calling myself a mommy, like, since 2018, 2017. I stopped using that. So if you see me as a mommy, that's on you, okay? That's you projecting. <laughs> so... Yeah, and if I'm doing like an online session with you, of course I'm going to role play as whatever you want me to be, but I don't ident identify as that role or identify as caregiver. Thoughts on ABDL scenes in other countries and would you ever travel to Europe or somewhere else for an ABDL event? No, only because um, I already have to, I travel enough and every time I do, I feel guilty about leaving hus my husband. <laughs> so, mm, so if it's like a f for fun event, I'm not going to do it. I, I don't really know the scenes in other countries. People are asking me like these questions I know nothing about. Would, would I ever travel to Europe for an ABDL event? Probably not. I am not even traveling to like anywhere in the U.S. for events, so probably uh, not in Europe. But they do seem fun. Um, the Amsterdam rave looks like a ton of fun, but yeah, it's, it's just not in my cards to go that far far for like a one day thing or even a two day thing um yeah the the only things I would like pleasure travel for at this <clears throat> point in my life is like haunted attraction stuff and even then I can't really get to that because my that period of the year is like not possible. Here's a good one. Sometime, sometimes life gets so stressful it's hard to get into headspace with my SO that it's caused some drama. So I'm guessing you want to get into little headspace or are you the big? I'm not sure what drama it's causing. So if you're a little, if you're an age player and it's hard for you to get into headspace when it's stressful. I mean, it sounds like it's in your head. It sounds like you think you don't deserve it, maybe. Um, so maybe re rethink what little space can be and think of it as a reward instead. Like, whoa, you just did all this stuff at work. You completed all this stuff in your personal time a lot that time in the week to have little space so that your significant other can be your caregiver and be willing to accept it um little space should be an escape just like a lot of things are like movies are an escape books are an escape theme parks are, are an escape so you deserve it um so it's up to you whether you can let go or not and if your significant other is trying to help you let go you have to just accept it um, put on music put on media that really is nostalgic to your little headspace and 
I don't know. Like, some people have an easy time doing it, and some people just have a really tough time, and I don't know what to do. Like, as, as the top person, I can only do so much. I can't control what you think. You have to just let go and trust yourself that you deserve that time. Last question, have you ever thought about having your own brand of ABDL diapers? So first I would like to ask you why? Why do you think it's necessary for, for say me to have my own brand of diapers? There's already a ton of companies that do that job well that have a ton of diapers out already and you have so many diapers to choose from so for me absolutely not because I don't think the the uh, the amount of money the ROI is good enough and there are so many different aspects to it from the design to the patent to naming it to um, looking at the samples um, and a lot of the diapers are made in a few uh, factories in China with just some differences in like uh, materials and design so then there's the manufacturing then there is the shipping then there's the import taxes then there's storage then there's shipping it out and there's marketing like I've owned a brick and mortar business to get into the country <laughs> so I didn't like it content creation and being a webmaster is so much easier I've been doing that for what year is it uh, for 21 years and the ROI on that is so much greater and the amount of effort you have to put into it is like so teeny tiny and minuscule compared to the logistics of having your own diaper marketing it importing it storing it shipping it all these factors absolutely not other people are doing it so well um i don't i feel like for the smaller diaper brands that do it yeah they want to create a product that's different and better but it's partially also kind of ego and I've done a lot of things that uh, fulfill that part that need that I have that is ego driven as in I know I can organize a munch and outreach and have a really good turnout I know I can get YouTube followers. <laughs> I know I can build a brand based on my own ego. <laughs> so I, I don't feel like I need to create that. And, and as for clothing, I don't feel that need either. Um, there's a ton of companies already doing that. Um, when I was younger, I really did like to design clothing but that was more on the alt and goth spectrum and I still like doing that for my own self for for things that I would potentially wear but for business wise and ROI I don't see a need to I'm at a place in my life where um, I'm really not taking a lot of financial risk because I am getting ready for my husband to be able to retire and be able to provide that for him. Um, I, I don't think I'll ever retire because I always like to stay busy but but because of that I'm not taking any type of un unnecessary unproven uh, financial risk. So yeah I'm, uh, I'm at a good place in my life right now where I'm being selfish and who knows, uh, maybe ABDL lunches in Vegas will come back soon. Maybe my break has been long, my selfish break has been long enough <laughs> and I don't know and my ego will uh, 
will drive me once again. Anyways, I'm glad you asked me all these questions. I hope I've answered them. Um, and yeah, stay padded everyone. And I'll see you around. Bye.